mobilization which took place in Russia with so many difficulties. How will it affect the situation at the front? Is it capable of changing the balance of power on the front line or has it become another window dressing and playing muscles? Has it been completed according to the Kremlin or will it continue but not so openly? And how many will the Kremlin send to the front? 300,000 as promised or up to a million? What is Russian polit political opposition saying about it? I'm Alexey Matsuka and let's dive into the details. To begin with, let's find out if in the mobilization organized by Moscow a full stop or a comma was put. Yes, the Russian Minister of Defense formally announced the completion of partial mobilization, like 300,000 people have been called up, 218,000 of them are being trained at training grounds, 82,000 are already at the front. These figures were also confirmed by Ukrainian intelligence, according to which there are already about 50,000 mobilized people on the territory of Ukraine. But there is the first oddity. When journalists asked Putin if there would be a decree uh, to end the mobilization, he said that he didn't think whether it was necessary to announce by decree that it was completed. At the same time, lawyers and human rights activists anonymously say that while there is no formal decision, it's possible to start giving out summons again at any moment. The need for a new round of mobilization may arise at any moment. As long as the partial mobilization is not completed by the official who announced it, its legal regime is preserved. Pavel Chikov, head of the human rights organization Agora. And this essentially means that Russians can now be taken to the front without much publicity. How they call it? In manual mode. Dmitry Peskov, Putin press secretary, even said, just imagine that there is a certain inertia of the military registration and enlistment officers at the end of mobilization. I wonder how long this inertia will last. The Russian Duma in these conditions continue to change the legislation under the new realities of military aggression. For example, they are preparing a draft law of criminal punishment for evading mobilization. Moreover, the initiator of the Duma Defense Committee, which prepared changes to other laws as well in order to legally cover up the invasion of Ukraine. What is happening now is the planned conscription call, which has been moved to November 1st. And not everything is so simple with it too, given that the legislation is rewritten simply on the go. The assurance of the Russian authorities that conscripts will not be sent to war cannot be trusted, human rights activists are sure. Both before and now, there are no legislative guarantees that conscripts will not be sent to the zone of military conflict, only statements and promises. At the very least, they cannot be sent there until they complete their training, in the first four months of service. Alexander Gorbachev, organization Soldiers' Mothers of St. Petersburg. At the same time, the American Institute for the Study of War also points to the possible participation of conscripts in hostilities in its forecast. They saw another legal loophole. Declaring martial law in the illegally occupied and annexed territories allows the Kremlin to send conscripts there without any trainings. After all, According to Russian laws, this is the territory of the Russian Federation. So it's likely that even more than 100,000 Russians will be taken into the army. It's just that the Minister of Defense of the Russian Federation needs time to digest the number of mobilized people who have already been called up and there is not enough equipment for them. And the summons were given out indiscriminately, which means that a huge part of the mobilized men turned out to have zero preparation. And some of them didn't even undergo military service in the past. And in general, the entire Russian system 
turned out to be unprepared for the transition the, to martial, martial law. And Putin's answers at the Valdai Forum show that he has neither a clear plan for waging the war against Ukraine, not a clear military strategy. And also, as sources in diplomatic circles shared with me in an off-the-record conversation, U.S. intelligence has data that Putin says stays in an information vacuum and, in principle, doesn't know the whole picture that losers, failures, and prospects are hidden from him by the Kremlin entourage in fear of punishment for their own failures. And there the main question arises, how will mobilization in Russia affect the situation at the front, no matter how many people are called up? Can it change it? Military experts have said from the very beginning of the war the mobilization is unlikely to improve the combat com capability of the Russian army. After all, all these years they were prepared to take part in local conflicts, not full-scale wars. The Russian army has been optimized for a short aggressive war, but it doesn't have the ability to wage a long conventional war, having at its disposal forces intended for peaceful times. Michael Kaufman, American military analyst. According to military experts, Russia started with war with Ukraine, having a lot of military equipment, but at the same time, in the, fact, in the face of a shortages of personnel. And after serious human losses during the first month of, of the war, it turned out that there was literally no one to fight. So such a hasty mobilization came to be. It's important to clarify one point here. The Russian army fights using so-called battalion tactical groups, when formally from 600 to 800 soldiers should be assigned into one group with a mandatory technical support. At the start of the war, 136 battalion tactical groups entered Ukraine. But according to the data available to the Pentagon, the Russian military command launched the invasion in conditions when they reported upstairs that they had the required numbers of such tactical groups. But in many of such regiments, there were not even half of the fighters. But now 300,000 mobilized can form almost 400 full-fledged battalion tactical groups. That's, that is, now the Russian Ministry of Defense wants to gather twice as many soldiers as it had in February at the start of the invasion. For such a number, according to the standards, more than 4,000 tanks are needed to say at least. And this is twice as much as it, it was on February 24th. And it's particularly impossible to provide these groups with enough supplies and not only with heavy equipment. They, Russian soldiers, are transferred in the format of marching battalions. This is completely different. This is the concept of the Second World War. I think everyone remembers the Soviet films very well, when the slender columns of the Soviet army with rifles and raincoats went to the front along the roads. So, in fact, these are marching battalions. A rifle, a raincoat, a helmet and an officer on a white horse. Without tanks, without an appropriate amount of artillery. Here is the difference. Alexander Kovalenko, military expert. Confirmation of such conditions come directly from the front. An illustrative example, the British Minister of Defense in its daily report on the situation in Ukraine writes that Russian mobilized troops are sent to fight with AKMS assault rifles, a version of the Kalashnikov assault rifle from the early 60s, which use 1943 cartridges. At the same time, the regular army uses more modern assault rifles and cartridges from them. How are they going to fight when even with this they have a mess and confusion? The presence of recently mobilized troops is now being recorded in different parts of the front line, in particular on the left bank of the Kherson region in Bas Bakhmut and Avdiivsky districts. 
that's in those sectors of the front where active hostilities are taking place, yes, by plugging up the holes in certain sectors on the, of the front, especially after the defeat of the Russian forces near Kharkiv, Russian, man, Russian man, managed to postpone further advance of the armed forces of Ukraine. But in situation at the front now depends not on the number of men with bayonets, but on the nature of the hostilities. The tactics of the Ukrainian army are to use high precision western main art artillery and strikes at the rear, which directly affect the situation where heavy fighting is taking place. According to Nova Gazeta, at least 100 Russian servicemen called up during this mobilization have already been killed in action. Moreover, the figure is clearly underestimated, since only deaths confirmed by the Minister of Defense of Russia are taken into account. And when more and more funerals will start coming to Russia, how will this affect the Federation itself? Mobilization in Russia turned the society into a direct participant of the war. It, in fact, came to every family and in order to prevent disconnected right now, that will definitely accumulate. The Kremlin is calling for a people's war. Hear what they are saying. Russia has always won any war if that one became a people's war. It has always been so. We will definitely win this war. But for this it is necessary that it becomes a people's war, so that everyone feels their involvement. Sergei Kiryenko, deputy head of the administration of the president of Russia. And here the intention of the authorities is understandable. By creating the imaginary involvement of everyone in the war to get support for the authorities' actions. But there is an important point here. It doesn't work that way. Because Russia is waging not a defensive, but an aggressive war. And what else has happened? For the first time since February, people began to receive information not from TV stations, but from relatives who were called up and they don't talk about victories and patriotism at all like on TV, but about inhuman conditions for soldiers, the lack of logistics and supplies, and about the horrors of this war. We will be able to talk about the results of mobilization only when this whole bloody wheel is turned, when either the coffins or the crippled come back, or just people who went there understood what is happening. When they are taken out of there, they will already be different people. Therefore, we perhaps will sum up this result later. Right now, it is still too early. Fyodor Krasininikov, political scientist. What else is important to understand? The mess and the chaos with mobilization showed that all the problems that Russia is now experiencing at the front lines of Ukraine were laid at the system level. And mobilization for Putin is now more for an escalation tool, both on the external arena and within the country. He intends to frighten external enemies with the possibility of full-scale mobilization in case the war goes over to Russia territory. But he also uses mobilization within the country as a tool to temporarily strengthen support for the authorities. And, the means, and that means that under various pretexts with different degrees of publicity, the mobilization will continue in Russia. What to expect from these actions and how will Kyiv respond? Will it turn increase the number of personnel in the Ukrainian army or is the plan going to be different? We will definitely talk about this in the new releases of my program. Thank you for watching and see you soon.